Hello, 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 my friends. I am back with another series on focus on the face. Um, if you've been watching me uh, and following uh, these, we first did um, how to tell what type of skin we have, the importance of primer. We looked at all of the different types of foundations and we looked at how do you pick the best shades for you. Today's session is going to be on um, the tools, the application tools. And before we start though, I just want to show you that I have my, I have put my primer on, I have my eyebrows done, I have my lashes and eyes done, I even have a lip stain on. Look at how I look though by not having a foundation on. And so it shows you how you need that foundation. You need it to be smooth. Look at all my imperfections and things. So even with doing my eyes and everything, it doesn't look right, okay? Now I also wanted to show you that I used the new technique for my lashes on this side, but not on this side. Okay, I'm trying to get you to see because I've got hooded eyes. You can absolutely see the difference. This side is only two coats of the Epic Brown. This one I used the uh, Esteem as the, the primer. Uh, put that on first, let it dry. Then I used my Epic, the setting powder, and, and Epic again. So it's both are two coats of Epic. It's just the technique. If you miss that, you can find that on... Instagram TV, on my Facebook personal wall, and also on my YouTube channel. It's mascara um, tips and tricks. So you can definitely see the difference. I'm gonna have to go back and fix this one. But let's start our focus on the face series. Excuse me. This one shouldn't take very long, I don't think either. Let's hope. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put my little timer on in fact. Welcome, my name is Lisa Thibodeau, and this is Tib Talk. Focus on the series, session four, on what are all the different ways that you can apply a foundation and what are the pros and cons of them. First of all, there's a whole bunch of them. The one that doesn't cost anything are these little digits here, your fingers. So your fingers can be used. Um, it's not my favorite type, um, but again, makeup is always what you like. Um, you can use fingers. There are different types of brushes. There are different types of sponges. There are blending buds. There are um, different types of, I don't, I don't even know what you call this, this type. It's like a silicone kind of sponge. It's not really a blending bud. So there are all different types we're gonna look at now. Whichever type you choose to use, you want to make sure that they're clean. So if you're going to use these fingers, you want to make sure you clean them because you do not want to take any, um, any risk when it comes to your face. All right. So my whole face is done except for my foundation. So it shows you that we need foundation. Um, if you looked at session three, when I chose my perfect color, I let in the liquid. Um, I have it here. And whenever you have a liquid, you want to shake it up, especially if it's a mineral. This is a mineral based. So that means there's mineral in there. So we want it really shook up so that the consistency um, is correct. What I also like to do with this is to kind of shake it up, make sure there's nothing else in this um, eyedropper, and then I like to kind of roll it and shake it up again. So there's two different ways that you can roll it. Now, there are many ways to apply a liquid. As I said, you could use your fingers, you could use a brush. My favorite is a brush. When you use your fingers, you're probably gonna use more of the foundation than you need to, okay? We actually have this liquid foundation brush. It's patented, it is specifically for our foundation, it has a little indented hole in the middle, and it's very tightly packed. Um, if you want to evenly diffuse your liquid, you want 
a brush that's tightly packed, okay? As opposed to a powder puff brush, look how these are not very tightly packed. This is good for a powder, okay? But not for a liquid, all right? Even though I have used this one before for a powder, it's really made for a powder. Look again, it is very loosely packed, okay? Look at this one again, see how I really have to pull it. It is firmly packed. That's what you want. The same thing if you pick this type of foundation brush. Again, it's pretty firmly packed and it is. Uh, it helps you to get a more precise um, foundation coverage, all right? So if you're gonna use a foundation brush, I would suggest one of these. And again, it's personal preference. Um, if I use my, and for this is for a liquid. Now, when I, what I usually do is if I'm going to use my BB Flawless, a tinted moisturizer, I'm going to either use my fingers, because your fingers are good for, you know, anything that's like a tinted moisturizer, real light, and you want it light. You're not worried about how much it's going to cover. You want it to just work its job on moisturizing, and you're just kind of putting it around. You also can use your fingers if your skin is pretty, you know, in good shape and you're just trying to even it out a little bit, then you could use your fingers as well. Um, just make sure that you keep them clean because I'm very worried about sanitation uh, when it comes to touching your face, all right? So if I'm gonna use the, the BB Flawless, I will either use a blending bud or I will use this, all right? The thing of this type of foundation brush, um, it, it can sometimes give you like streaks. So if you're gonna apply it with this and you're trying to, it can get it right there and it can really pack it in. But then I would suggest you use the blending bud to really kind of uh, smooth it out because the blending buds are gonna give you almost an airbrush finish. So almost any of these that you use, I still would suggest you have a blending bud. Now, blending buds, there are so many kinds. Look, there are different sizes. Look at the different sizes I've got just right here. Different shapes, there's all different types. Um, <coughs> excuse me, we do sell them on our site, but, and this is one from our site, there's really no big difference though in any, in any other type. You might see, it's just your preference again. This one's softer. Okay, this one's a little bit harder. This one, this one's very hard, all right? So it depends on what you feel when you wanna do it. The main thing for a blending bud is do not use it dry, unless you're using it for powder, which you can like dip it in powder and kind of pack your powder um, in different places. When you're using it for concealer, foundation, blending of any type, you want it wet and damp, put it under the, um, faucet or always I have like some water here I'll spray it and then kind of squeeze it a little bit so that it's damp that's going to make your best airbrushed natural finish and help really get it to stay so as I said whatever type you use you want to have some type of blending bud now, I love for people to come to my house for one-on-ones. Uh, it's completely free. Um, there's no purchase necessary. You can get color matched. And I always end up using a blending bud. So I have a whole bunch, and I usually give that as a free gift when you come for a one-on-one. -on -one. So book that if you'd like to do that. So I'm going to use the um, foundation brush that's made for this liquid, and I'm going to show you how I put it on. So I usually put a couple of drops in the middle. Some people put it around. If you need a lot of coverage, you might put um, concealer, a few dots of concealer around. And then you just want to first put it all over. Okay. So however you're doing it, if you're doing it with your fingers, I'll show you the same way. If you're gonna do it with your fingers, I did wash my hands before. Again, just first put it everywhere. And yesterday uh, in session three, I gave you a tip to put less on your nose. So I'm not putting any on my nose. I'm going to blend it up to my nose. And don't forget your jawline into your neck as well. So with these tight bristles though, it makes it easy to actually go in circles and buff it into your skin. 
It's going to make it natural and it's going to make it stay. I'm just going in circles. So for a liquid, this is my favorite, the liquid brush. But I'm also going to use my blending bud. Don't stop here. Make sure you pull it down into your neck and blend it. Then I'm going to, at the last minute, pull it over my nose. That's going to make your foundation look much more natural if you have less on your nose. Now, unless you have some kind of birthmark or um, rosacea or something, you know that you need the coverage, a lot of people don't. So you want that to be your lightest coverage on your nose. Otherwise, you look more made up, okay? You, you, they see that foundation. All of unique makeup is very buildable. So I usually just put a few blocks. Notice that this was my whole face with just those few drops, maybe four or five drops at the most. I, 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 I was accounting, but it wasn't much in there. And that's also why I like to use this because it helps to make sure you don't overuse your makeup, okay? And this is high quality makeup and you don't want to use too much. You want it to last you, but it is buildable. So for instance, I can put a few more drops in my little areas that I have the big uh, hyperpigmentations and rosacea. So how's that? Okay, so when you're talking liquid, fingers, liquid foundation brush, or what this is just type of brush is called a liquid, it's just called a foundation brush, it's just a foundation brush. Um, this type of brush is really only a unique brush if you want it, and it is specifically, it was specifically made for the liquid foundation. When it first came out, a lot of people were using this. As I said, the problem with this for a liquid is you can just put it, and especially if it's not, if it's kind of a thicker liquid like ours is, you could put a few drops and you still could do it, but you're gonna get a different finish um, on it, okay? So this one is good for powder. This one is good for powder. When you're talking about powder, you want a brush that is, notice how it's kind of like a bell shape and it's not as tightly packed. This is gonna help for the makeup to gradually come off of your um, brush, okay? Um, let me give you some example. I'm gonna actually use it with the setting powder instead of the regular powder, but it would be the same thing with regular powder. This is my favorite one. Um, a lot of people do like this one. This is a powder puff type brush. You would just put it in. This one's my favorite. I love this brush. In fact, I call it my favorite brush. It's the powder concealer brush. So you would just put it in there. And the thing about it is it really holds that powder in. And a good powder brush is not going to put it all in one place. So it is not going to be like I have to do this and then, oh, there's no more powder on it. There's still powder all on it. So it's going to gradually take the makeup off. That's perfect when you're wearing a powder um, foundation. So if you're using our loose powder or our pressed powder with the brush, then this is really the best brush for it because you want it to be gradually so that you can blend and you can get that um, buffing motion, that mattified motion and be able to, um, to get a good coverage, okay? So that I just used it with setting powder, which is what I like to use on my thing, on my, over my um, liquid. Okay, but for instance, here's a crepe press powder. So if I wanted to, it's, it's a little bit lighter than the eyelet, so I could put a little bit lighter in here. Now 
Notice when you have a brush, if you have a brush that when you stick it in, I'm gonna try to make it do it, but I don't know if I can make it do it. And it just puts it all right there, okay? You see how I just did like that? Well then, that's not what you want from a good powder brush. You want it to gradually um, release the makeup from the brush. So it really does hold it on there, okay? And this can be used for um, liquid as well. I actually do sometimes, I use it for BB Flawless, but look what I have. I have it layered with liquid and powder so I don't get them mixed up, even though you wanna make sure you clean them, okay? The reason I love this brush too is because you really have this little small part that can really get you in creases or get in places where you feel like you need a little bit more coverage, okay? So we've talked about um, the best types for a liquid. We talked about the best types for a powder. And we also talked about the fact that a blending bud, whatever type you have, is the best type to make sure that you're getting everything blended. And it's perfect for a concealer, which is what our next session is going to be about. Now, all of our cream and powder, pressed powder, does come with a brush like this. It's a good brush to use if you like a brush. Because again, it's very, very packed. These type of brushes you make, uh, sponges you've seen before, these are not good for liquid foundation. A lot of people use it for it, but it absorbs most of the foundation. So when you try to use it with this, more of it's gonna get in here and you're wasting it. And guys, we don't wanna waste our foundation. We want it all on our face, not on our sponge, okay? So that's why this uh, liquid brush is so good because you're not wasting any. It stays right there in that little indention that puts it on there. This is really good though for the cream, okay? But you could also use a blending bud for the cream, but this does come with it. Now, this is a new type of applicator that has come, and I did get it so I could, could try it. I wasn't a fan of it. Some people love it. It's like a silicone um, made thing. Uh, some of the pros of it is obviously nothing's going to be absorbed into it, and it's very easy to clean. I just didn't like the application of it. But I will tell you, if you're a person that likes to use your fingers um, and is realizing that, hey, maybe I shouldn't because of sanitary reasons, well, then this would be a good way to do it and then still use that blending bud to buff it in, okay? I hope that helped you to kind of figure out what's best for you. And again, everything that I'm telling you when I'm focusing on the face is what do you like, guys? There are no hard and fast rules. I'm giving you tips and tricks, but remember, you try to get all the information you can, which is what I'm trying to give to you, and then choose what you feel best with. This, When I use this, the liquid foundation, and then with the setting powder, and I'll put it on with that brush, this is when I feel like uh, it feels very natural, it feels very light, and look at the difference from how now my eyes and my lips look now that my face has um, the same even tone, all right? I hope this has been a help to you. Um, this series is just to help my customers to get that flawless face that I want all of you to have when you look in the mirror. If you think that one of your friends might like to uh, know this, I'd appreciate a share. And remember, you can always find any of these on my Instagram TV, on YouTube, or on my personal wall. And if you have trouble, just let me know. Message me, and I'll tag you in it. Thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you need anything, remember my website is tiptalk.com. And if I can help you color match or choose the right brush or blending bud, I'd love it. Y'all have a fantastic day. And remember, we rise by lifting others.